As fall approaches, we are reaching peak season for RSV, a respiratory virus. It's spread through close contact with an infected coughing or sneezing person, and it's so common that the American Lung Association says nearly 100% of children are infected by the age of two. But it is also the leading cause of infant hospitalization. Dr. Juanita Mora, an allergist and immunologist with the American Lung Association, joins us to help keep your family safe. Doctor, what are the most common signs and symptoms of RSV? Sure, Paige, thank you for having me. So RSV is a respiratory virus and it spread really easily. One kid coughs on another, they share toys, they share the same doors, touching the same doorknobs, et cetera. And the way it starts, it's with mild symptoms. So they have a runny nose, maybe a little fever, fatigue. But when it turns a little bit dangerous, it's when it starts hitting the lungs and it can cause bronchiolitis or pneumonia, which leads to hospitalization in children. Why does the virus present so differently in adults than it does infants? We know that kids' lung development doesn't finish till 9 to 11 years of age. Mm. So those lungs are more predisposed to the complications of this respiratory virus. And when we look at the actual data, RSV causes 2.1 million visits to the pediatricians in season, 55,000 hospitalizations in kids. And as you said, number one reason for hospitalization in those 12 months or below of age. Well, how do parents or caregivers know when RSV is taking that serious turn and it's time to get to the hospital? Sure, what we want parents to know is those signs and symptoms that can show us that a kid might be in trouble. One is labored breathing. If a kid is using their accessory muscles because they can't take a good deep breath, if they're dehydrated, they can't keep fluids down because dehydration is often a side effect of RSV. If, for example, as well, too, you have um, they have trouble with a hacking cough that won't go away. This is a time to talk to your pediatrician or maybe head to the emergency department at this time, especially kids who are at higher risk for complications from RSV. Those preemies born before 35 weeks of age, those with chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease, or anything that makes them immunocompromised. Why do you expect the virus to spread so much more this year compared to RSV seasons in the past? We definitely predict that all levels of RSV and influenza are going to be back to pre-pandemic levels as we truly bring down our guard and bring down those actual sources of mitigation that we had in place, the mask wearing. We're also bringing down the physical distancing, et cetera. So we expect more kids to be infecting, which is why we're sounding the alarm with this campaign. Finally, how is RSV treated and how can we prevent it in the first place? Sure. One is do not send your child sick to the nursery or to school because we don't want to spread germs. Two, keeping their immune system nice and robust and healthy, eating a good healthy diet, etc. And for kids at high risk, such as those preemies, etc., then there is a vaccine called Synergist that's once a month through the season of fall through spring for RSV that helps to prevent severe complications. And people can talk to their pediatrician if their child is high risk for RSV complications. Dr. Juanita Mora, thank you so much for joining us today. And you at home can learn more about the American Lung Association's campaign to spread awareness about RSV by visiting lung.org.